Hello everyone, in this session we will discuss bonds issued at par. At par, same thing at face value or maturity value. Now when a bond is issued at par, it means that the bond stated value or the face value matches the price at which it's sold. So think of a $100 bill. You sell it for exactly $100 for its face value. It should sell for that much because it's stated there. But why would a company issue or sell a bond this way? The primary reason is this. The contract rate, the offering rate, the coupon rate that the company is offering to the investor matches that the market rate that's ongoing at this moment or at this time when the bond is sold. So are you telling me the bond could be sold something at other than the par value? And the answer is yes, but we'll discuss this later. But when, when the bond is sold at par, it means the investors are earning exactly the prevailing rate, which is exactly the offering rate. So the investors will have no preference. So the, if the company is offering 8% as the coupon rate, the ongoing market for similar investments and in bond is also 8%. Therefore, the investor does not care whether they buy this company's bond or another company's bond. So this alignment between the stated rate and the market rate ensure that the bond is neither sold at a premium, which we'll see later, nor at a discount, which we will see later. And from an accounting perspective, you are going to see it simplifies the issuings process and it's make it easier for us. And the investor is earning exactly the ongoing market rate. So, Later on, later means in the next few sessions, we would look at bond issued at a discount, why, bond issued at a premium, and also why. But for now, we will focus on bond issued at par. And the best way to illustrate this is to look at an example with journal entries. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website, give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. Let's look at this example where we issue a bond at par value. Let's assume Nike issues 200,000 6% three-year bonds on January 1st, 20X2. They mature January 1st, 20X5. It's a semi-annual interest payment paid on July 1st and January 1st. So let's first establish the issuance of the bond. So the company sold a bond and in return received funding. How much did they receive? Exactly the face value because the bond is sold at par. The bond is sold at par. Why was it sold at par? Because the offer, offering rate or the interest rate, the coupon rate, the stated rate is equal to the market rate. Therefore, they were able to receive the full 200,000. Therefore, the company will debit cash 200,000. They will credit bonds payable 200,000. And what we just did, we just established a liability called bonds payable for 200,000. Now, what is the deal with this bond? The deal is this. For the next three years, they will pay interest semi-annually. So we will have to deal with six interest payments. So the next thing we're, we are going to look at is how to record the interest payment. Now this is easy because it's a par value bond. Par value means it's not a discount bond, it's not a premium bond, which we will deal with in the next session. What does that mean? It means the cash paid, which is 200,000 
times 6% times 1 half. Why 1 half? Because it's a semi-annual. The interest payment every six month equal to $6,000 every six month. So every six month, we have to come up with a cash amount of $6,000. So what entry do we make when we make this interest payment? Well, July 1st, six months later, we'll debit interest expense, 6000 We credit cash, 6000 January 1st, 20X3, we assume we are not going to prepare the accrued expense on December 31st, we debit interest expense 6,000, credit cash 6,000. And this entry would repeat itself six different times. What do you need to notice here? You need to notice that the cash amount equal to the interest expense. Now, this is unusual in a sense that most bonds you, you will be dealing with will either be a premium or a discount. And we have to account for the premium and the discount we're not discussing this in this session. I just want to let you know that the cash amount is not always equal to the interest expense. It happens to be because we have no discount, no premium to take care of. So this entry, debit interest expense, credit cash, would repeat itself six times. Then January 1st, 20X5, what happened to this bond? Remember, we established this bond in the year X2. Now we have to pay it off. The company will have to pay back the face value of the bond because the face value was recorded. And always, 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 the bonds payable is recorded at face value. Whether you received more than the face value, which is a premium bond, or less than the face value, which is a discounted bond. It's always recorded at 200000 So what's going to happen when we pay off the bond? We debit the bonds payable, 200000 Now the bonds is gone. The bonds payable is paid off, debit bonds payable, and credit cash to pay it off. And therefore, we end the life of this bond. So we established the bond, the first entry. We made the interest payment, and now we closed the bond. Now the bonds payable is zero. companies do is they prepare what's called amortization schedule to keep track of the interest payment, the carrying value of the bond. Now, the carrying value of a par value bond is easy because the carrying value, just if you want to um, copy this formula down, we are going to see it in the next few sessions, the carrying value equal to face value. Now, if it's a premium bond, minus, I'm sorry, if it's a premium bond, plus unamortized premium, if it's a premium bond, if it's a discount bond, minus unamortized discount. Now, in this situation, we don't have a premium, we don't have a discount, which we'll deal with those. Therefore, what's face value? 200,000 minus zero equal to 200,000. So the face value of this bond is always 200,000 because we have no premium and no discount to account for. Now, the interest payments, the cash interest payment is 6,000. Simply put, in total cash, we paid 36,000. Then at the end of the bond, which is January 1st, year X5, we paid off the bond. And the bond carrying value, once it's paid, it's off the books, it goes down to <clears throat> it goes down to zero once it's paid off because we removed the bond. The face value of the bond goes down to zero. Now in the next session, we will be doing the same thing, except we will be dealing with a premium bond. We will deal we will be dealing with a discount bond. We are going to issue those bonds record the interest payments for those bonds, prepare an amortization schedule, then retire the bonds. We'll do this. We'll do one for the premium bond, one for the discount bond. We are adding pieces to this challenging chapter, bonds payable. What should you do? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at multiple choice questions. That's going to help you understand this concept better. Stay motivated.